It's TK Friday, and you're watching The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, it's going to be another full edit. I've entitled this image, A Serenade of Stone and Sky. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thanks for joining me again on TK Friday. It's good to have you on board today. Today's image comes to us by Andres Juliao, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Andres. But this is a really cool image here, and I thought there's a hidden gem in this raw file. Now, I started this out as I always do in Lightroom. I'm just jumping right into this right now, by the way. I used a linear profile. This was shot with a Sony camera. And I just basically, after I applied the linear profile, clicked on auto, and then I just fine-tuned it a little bit with whites and blacks just to make sure I'm not blowing out any highlights or shadows here. Looking at the histogram, everything looks pretty cool here. Uh, just some basic adjustments here, and I always do lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections, and under detail, uh, just some color noise reduction and uh, a little bit of sharpening here. And that's basically it, and at this point, I just right-click on the image, go to Edit In, and Edit in Photoshop 2023, and we'll be there next. And now, welcome to Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Now, I always like to keep my CX panel and my combo panel always opened up in Photoshop. Now, I keep the CX panel solely for actions. Now, if I click the X, you can see there's the CX panel. And if I click on TK for actions, there they are. And then if I open up an action, after the action runs, this stays open because I went ahead in the preferences and set it up to do that. And then I work from the combo panel. Now, I'll be solely working from this combo panel today. But you could do the same thing that I'm doing on the combo panel right here on the CX panel. It just looks a little bit different. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. And as always, you can download this image and the PDF notes and give this edit a tryout for yourself. Just go to the description below this video, click on show more, and you'll find my Dropbox links for the notes and the image. Now, the first thing I want to do is save out a sky and a foreground channel. To do that, we'll just click on this button right here. This will find the sky for us. And then we can click right here, this button. This brings up the save selection dialog and I'm gonna call this sky and click okay. And then all we need to do is invert it. It's the button right below here, not this invert button. This inverts a pixel layer, this will invert a selection. So click this button and that inverts it. And now click that button above it again and we're gonna call this one foreground and then simply click OK. And now you can see we have a sky and a foreground. And right now our foreground is selected. You could tell by the marching ants. And now for the first adjustment. Now the first adjustment for me is always balance and contrast. Sometimes it's the entire image, sometimes it's the foreground separate from the sky, which it will be that way today. I'll start with the foreground. So we could come up here to my channels and you can see we still have a selection here by the marching ants. So I can choose either active selection or foreground because the foreground is selected. So I'm just gonna click on foreground. Okay, and there you can see my foreground. Now I need my mass calculator. So I'm gonna click on this mass calculator button. I need to do an intersection, so I'll click on X. I can X out of the foreground selection. And now I can come here and click on this luminosity mass button. And I always like to use midtones three. All that really does is protect the deepest shadows and the highest highlights from getting clipped. And then I just click equal and that makes the calculation. And as you can see, I just have the foreground selected. And now I output that to a color grading tool. Before I make that adjustment, I want to say something about this uh, new multi mass beta panel. Some of you have had issues and I've had comments about this. Uh, let me X out of the color grading tool here for a second. If your tool tips are turned on and I'll show you and to get to your tool tips on the multi mass beta panel, click the TK. I'll turn my tool tips on by checking on show tool tips. And now let's go to that color grading tool. 
And when you hover over the color grading tool, this is the problem that some of you have been having. You're like, man, I can't adjust my color grading tool. Here's your solution. Just X out of the color grading tool, click on that TK button and check off show tool tips and you'll be good to go. And then if you want to see tool tips, hold down your option on a Mac or alt on a PC and just hover over any button and you can see the tool tips for all the different buttons. So that should help you out. And now let me go ahead and click on the color grading tool again. Let me start out with shadows. I'm gonna click on the shadow circle here. And then I'm just gonna drag this brightness slider to the left over to like 32. I'm just looking at my notes here, right there. And that darkens up my shadows. And now we're gonna go to midtone. So let's click on this gray circle. And I'm gonna really open up these midtones. And I'm gonna take them up to like 54. Now you don't see anything when you drag this slider till you release your mouse click on the slider. And I'm going to 54 right here. And I release it. And now we can see here's the before and here's the after. Now I'm gonna give you a little tip for color grading. You see this number right here? After you've moved this brightness slider, take note of this number. And if you wanna experiment with color grading, here's a tip. Double click this number and highlight it, and then you could right click it. Uh, I'm on a Mac, I think it's the same way in a PC, but I'm not sure, but however you copy, and just copy that. Or you could do a Command or Control C, which is the shortcut for copy. Now the way this new color grading tool works, you don't click and drag this puck. What you do is just hover your cursor over wherever you want to change the color grade to and just left click with your mouse and it changes it you see that so I'll move it up here left click move it into greens left click move it down into blue and you can move anywhere you want with pinpoint accuracy so that's really cool but say like you're experimenting and now you're like yeah I don't know if I want to color grade I'd like to reset this remember that you copied that hexadecimal code when you moved the brightness slider just double click here and you can do the shortcut of command or control V, or you could right click it and paste it in. I'm just gonna do a command V cause I'm on a Mac. And then you have to click this button right here and it'll reset itself. So that is my little tip for you. And I think that'll be helpful. Now, according to my notes, I typed in this hexadecimal code A39B8E. And if you want my exact color grade, you don't have to use it, you can use your own. Just type that number in, then click this arrow button, and now you'll have the exact color grade as I had. I'm just gonna start doing it this way in my videos, that way I could get the same color grade as my original edit. And if you wanna use my exact color grade, just type in the hexadecimal code from my notes and put it in the color grading tool, or use your own color grading. And now let's move on to the sky. So I'm gonna X out of the color grading tool, click on my channels. This time I'm going to select sky, so click on sky. Click on the mass calculator, X for an intersection, so click on the X, X out of the sky selection. We're gonna go back to the luminosity mass button and choose midtones three, again, only to protect the highlights and shadows from clipping. Click equal to make the calculation, and now we'll output Put that to a color grading tool so click this button right here and we're going to start out with midtone so i'll click on the gray circle and i'm going to drag the brightness slider to the left to over to like minus 21 right there and now we're going to work with the highlights now i'm not going to do any color grading here so i'll click on the white circle and i'm going to drag this to the right to a plus 55 which is going to be right here now here is the before and here's the after and I think we're off to a good start. I'm gonna click my before after action button right here. So here's before and here's after. So looking really good. Now I do wanna say something if you've downloaded my updated before after action. I've had some comments and some were saying, hey, it's not working for me, Dave. And the problem is if your background gets changed to another name like layer zero or something like that, this action won't work because it's looking for a layer called background with a capital B. Now Photoshop always starts you out with a background layer, but if you click on this lock here, it's gonna rename itself, I believe, to like layer zero, and then the before after action won't work. If the first layer is not called background, just double click on the name, and then simply just type in background, but make sure you use a capital B, and then it'll work with one little caveat, and that is, when you click the before after action, the first time you click it, it will go to the background layer. But when you click it again, you'll see the after, but it, it will not go back up to the top if you've renamed it to another name and then changed it back to background. But if you start out in Photoshop and leave your background layer locked, this action should work perfectly for you. Now for clarification, here's the file I edited the other day. 
in preparation for this video and I renamed my background layer to a different name and then named it back to background again. And if I'm on this color grading layer right here and click my before after action, you can see there's the before. When I click it again, here's the after. But notice the top color grading layer does not become active. I have to click in it to make it active. But if you've never renamed that background layer and you've left it just the way Photoshop made it, when you click the before after action, when you click before it goes to the bottom, and then when you click before after again, it goes back up to the top. And hopefully that clears things up. If you don't have my new updated before after action, I'll link it in the description below. On to the next step. What I want to do is bring up the weaker saturated colors. And to do that, let's X out of the color grading tool. I'll use a saturation vibrance mask. So we'll click on this button. Now, right now I have my navigator open. I'm going to click on my histogram because what I want to do is find the weaker saturated colors. So let me click on vibrance one. I'm going to use the vibrance mask to help me find that. Okay, so there's vibrance one. But I want you to notice where this histogram is setting. See the left side of it right here? I'm trying to move it over to touch the left side here. This side to touch this side. So watch when I click on Vibrance 2. See how it's moving over? So I'm looking for those weaker saturated colors. Here's 3. And let's try one more 4. So that is targeting the weaker saturated colors. Now all I need to do is output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer and make some adjustments. Now right now you'll notice I'm on master. This is a drop down and we have all these different hues in here and I will look at them all. I'll start out with master and I'm going to take the saturation and drag it over to the right and this will just pull up the weaker saturated colors. And I'm going to take this over to right here 36. And also I have a lightness slider, so I'm just going to pull this lightness slider a little bit to the left to like a minus 10 right there. Now here's my before and here's my after. It's already looking better. And also you have hue here, but I don't want to touch that. Now we're going to go to reds and I'll saturate those reds a little bit more to somewhere right about here. And now let's see what else. Let's go to yellows and let's pull up those yellows. I'm going to pull them up to like 31, I think right there. Let's go to cyans. Let's see if there's any cyan in here. Not much cyan happening. So you could just double click this and reset it. And now let's go to blues. Let's give those blues a little more saturation. And I think right here at 70. But I also want to lighten them up. So let me take this lightness slider to the right over to like right here, 27. And now let's check out magentas. Let me take the saturation up in the magentas to somewhere right about here, 46. And then let's lighten those magentas up to somewhere right about here, 16. And now let's take a look at the overall hue and saturation and here's the before and here's the after. So I think this is a really helpful adjustment. The next thing I want to do is lighten up these tones in here. And to do that, I think we can use a zone mask. But first, let's go up to my channels. Let's click on foreground because I want to keep this in the foreground and protect the sky. Let's click on the mask calculator. X to intersect. We'll X out of this selection. Now we're going to click this zone mask button and we want to click this tone right in here. So right there, we'll click OK. Now we're going to do something that I like to call tighten and lighten. We can fine tune with this adjustment up here. And originally I had mine right at like 92. So let's move this to 92. And now I'm going to tighten it up by dragging this slider into the left to somewhere right around here. See how it really targets those tones. And now I can use this slider to lighten it up to somewhere right about here. And now when I look at my notes, I actually had this on a 95. So let me just pull this over to a 95 just so I can keep things just the way the notes were. So see how that targets all those tones in there. Now we need to make the calculations. So we'll click on equals and there we have our mask. And now I'm going to output that to a curves adjustment layer and we're going to put that in a screen blend mode to lighten. And just like that, those tones lighten up. And now I think it's too strong. So I'm going to take my overall opacity and just drag it back. And I'm going to take it right here to like 58. Here is my before and here's after. But isn't that nice how that just really lightens up those tones? Gives these rocks some character. Let's take a look at the overall before. Here's the before and here is the after. So I really love this so far. Beautiful image. And now I think I'm going to try some soft pop. So Here's my soft pop action. To get to soft pop, I'm just going to click right here. But if you don't have your actions open, you can click the TK button. So let me click on soft pop and see what we get. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Here's the before and here's the after. I love what's happened to the overall image. A nice pop of color and detail. But you know what? 
I don't want to apply it to the entire image. I do want to apply it to the entire image, but only to a certain tonal range. And to help me figure out what that range is, I'm going to click on this button on the uh, TK8 multi mask beta panel. This lets us go into layer mask mode and we can see what kind of a mask. We could sample out different masks. You know what? I tried like a mid tones three. And you can see the change, right? Or here's a mid-tones one. Not much is happening there. Let's try a lights one. And not bad. But I finally settled on like a darks one. I thought a darks one really did it. Now, if that was too strong, we could try like a darks two. See how that's not quite as strong? Tones it back a little bit, but I think I'm going with darks one. And I think I'll leave this up at 100%. You can always pull this opacity back if you need it. But here's the before soft pop and here's after but i like it usually at some point in the edit i feel like i need to lighten up my mid-tones after doing a bunch of editing the mid-tones can darken up a little bit sometimes so let's x out of the layer mask mode just click on the x and i'm going to click on the luminosity mask button and this is the way i lighten the mid-tones i use mid-tones one and of course you have mid-tones two mid-tones three they're just different mid-tone values mid-tones one will give you a more subtle adjustment if that makes sense so it's going to be the less aggressive lightning so that's mid-tones one i'll output it to a curves adjustment layer and i'll simply use the screen blend mode to lighten up the mid-tones you see that but it's too strong and usually what i recommend is take it the whole way off and then just start to build the opacity up slowly to the right and what I did was when I got to 40, I thought that looks really good right there. So here's the before and here's the after. It just gives those mid-tones a little lightness. Now, up next, these rocks. Now, you got to admit these rocks are a big part of this image. So I really want to bring out some character in these rocks, get some texture and some clarity. So to do that, I'm going to use something that I normally don't use, and that's the camera raw filter. And it has some great texture and clarity and dehazing adjustments in there. So what I need to do normally is bring all this image together into a stamp layer, but this Adobe Camera Raw filter button will do that for us. Now, if you look at this curves icon, see the white dash lines around it, that means that's active. You do not want to have the mask active. Like I'll click on the mask and show you. See the dash lines around the mask? Because right now if I click on ACR, that mask will go in there and we could adjust the mask. But I don't want to do that. So click on the icon for the curves adjustment layer. And now click on ACR. And now it'll stamp that layer and take us into Adobe Camera Raw. And in the basic section here, and if yours isn't open, you can just click on basic and open it up. And here we're going to have a texture slider. So what I'm going to do is pull that texture slider to the right. And I'm going to be pretty aggressive here because I'm going to paint my adjustment on locally. In some areas of the image, it'll be stronger than others. And you'll see here. But first, let's make the adjustment. So 53 on texture. And on clarity, I took it up to like 22 on clarity. And I used a little dehazing as well. I took my dehazing up to like 24. That gives us a little bit of a contrast and saturation boost. But as you can see, it's really aggressive. And that's all I want to do, so I'm going to click OK. And now I want to hide this adjustment. So on my combo panel, see this black button right here? Click on that. That puts a black hide all mask on here. And now with a white brush, so I'm going to click on my white brush at an opacity of about 30%. I'm just typing my three key. I'll adjust my brush size accordingly and paint on my texture and clarity. So I'm just going to start painting it on. Now, every time I lift my brush and paint again, I'll apply more of the effect. But again, some areas I'll give more effect to. This is kind of just like dodging and burning where you're the artist and you control what's happening here, okay? Now, there is no layer masks or anything, so it's, I mean, there's a layer mask, but there's no luminosity or zone mask, so it's all up to you. So you got to be careful here. And again, don't overdo it, but we're just going to paint this on and up into here. But you don't want to apply the same amount everywhere. You know, think artistically, okay? Now, stay away from the edge up here because you don't want to go up into the sky. So I'm going to make the brush a little smaller, but you get the drift, right? Just paint along here, and we'll just bring out some details in here, and I think this will really help these rocks to sing, and I think they're going to be happy because we're doing this to them. They'll probably thank you for it, you know? So rocks are our friends, right? So let's do this here. Okay, so down in here a little bit. And just, again, you know, take your time and 
do it just the way you like it. But let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But doesn't that help out? I really like it. I might give this area a little bit more right up in here. Let me go ahead and shut this texture and clarity layer off. I'll click the eye. Here's before and here is after. And don't forget, you can always pull the opacity back, but I like it just the way it is. Then what I want to do next is I just want to darken up some of these darker tones in the rocks. We'll do that next. I'm going to go ahead and click on the zone mask button and I'm going to sample like a dark tone, like right in here. See, like right there. Click OK. And I don't think I need a mass calculator because once I tighten and lighten this, I think I'll drop that sky out. And I'm going to drag this slider over a little bit to fine tune this to right about here at a 20. And now I'm going to tighten this up. Let's see how that sky dropped out. And I think I'll tighten it up to right about here. And then we're going to go ahead and lighten it up a bit with this brightness slider to say right about here. I'm going to output this to a curves adjustment layer and what blend mode do you think I want to use to darken if you're thinking multiply you're on the right path so let's click on multiply and see how that darkens all those rocks but now that's too strong so again take the opacity the whole way off and build it up slowly and when I get to somewhere right around 40 let's check it out here is the before and here's the after now those rocks are really starting to sing and I really like it I love the uh rocks against that beautiful sky why it's a serenade of stone and sky i'd love to edit one of your images on a tk friday all you got to do just click on my contact me link in the description below this video just click on more or show more and click contact me and contact me and we can discuss how i can edit your image on a tk friday we're almost done now i zoomed into 400 percent, and i don't know if you can see here it's very light there's a slight halo around the edge here. It's very easy to take care of. All you have to do is this. You need to stamp all your layers together into a pixel layer, and you can click this button. This is on my combo panel. I'm clicking it. Stamps all my layers together. Get a clone stamp tool. Now, you can type your S key to get a clone stamp tool. Make sure the opacity is 100%, and make sure, see where it says mode here right now? This is a drop down. Make sure you're not on normal, but on darker color. That's all you need to do. And just get a nice small brush here. Like you notice here, I have a really small brush. And what I'm going to do is option click or alt click right above this line where we see the halo. Not on the halo, but above it like that. And all you have to do is just paint across there at 100%. And wherever you see that halo, just paint away and you'll get rid of the halo. It's just that easy. So I thought I'd point that out because I'm sure some of you might say, you know what, Dave, I got a little bit of a halo there. How do I get rid of it? And that'll get rid of it for you. So I thought I'd point that out. And now on to the last step. And that is, I thought I was going to add a vignette to the entire image, but I thought it really doesn't need it on this image. But I noticed the bottom left corner seems a little light compared to the right corner. So I thought if I would just darken this up slightly, I could go ahead and balance out the bottom of this image. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a burn tool, no masking or anything. I'm going to come to my combo panel. Now we have two sides to a burn tool. The left side gives us a 50% gray layer. The right side gives us a blank pixel layer. You can use either side you want. I like the 50% gray side. So I'm going to click on the left side. And now you'll notice we have a soft light blend mode with a 50% gray layer. And with a nice big brush with a nice soft edge on it. I'm going to change my brush opacity to 5%. Now the shortcut to get to 5% is 0.5. And now I'll just simply paint over here on this edge here. There's one pass. I haven't lifted my brush. Here's another pass right in this area right here. And let's check, check it out. Here is the before and here is the after. So it just uh, darkens that side up a little bit and adds a little bit of balance. And that is it. So we've come from, let's use my before after action. We've come from here and we end up here, but I'm really happy with the way this edit came out. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this full edit tutorial today. Thank you very much for joining me on yet another TK Friday. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you 
for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.